You know what I don't like? Me getting a game and not playing it. And then finding out much later that it's actually a really good game and that I should have played it much earlier when I got it. What game is it? Well, let me get it from my fridge. Egg, which is short for Elemental Gimmick Gear, is an action-adventure RPG game hatched by birthday, yeah, that's kind of weird, that I was introduced to by Sonic Shuffler once again for viewer requests. Special thanks for recommending me this game. Why? Well, it's because it's actually a pretty damn good game, even if I do get pissed off and yell at the game a lot, which I will talk about later in the review. Now, I know the title of the game sounds kind of dumb. Let's be honest, calling a game Egg and having the word gimmick as one of the acronyms isn't exactly an exciting title name, but trust me, once you've gotten past the name, you're in for a legit awesome action adventure game. What's the story, being the action RPG it is? Well, you play this character called Leon, by default, who was awakened by the plot caused by these three assholes digging in the runes and reactivating something from a long time ago. You wake up to find that you've been asleep for over 5,000 years since being discovered in the runes, which I call bullshit because Leon is a fucking human, confirmed in game, and he should not have been able to survive that long without something to keep him alive, and even then, I call bullshit. You know, that part always bugged me about the story, but I'm not gonna talk about it any further, otherwise I'd be here all day asking, how did Leon survive for over 5,000 years if he's human? What, did his egg preserve him for that long? I call bullshit. Anyways, way too far back then, Leon is found inside of a machine that the people named Egg, and for years the people have used the design of the original Egg to make new eggs for a variety of tasks such as for work and for war. Of course. Which leads back to the three assholes we saw earlier, waking up some ancient tech in the ruins which they named Fogna because it's surrounded by fog. Nah? Well, it wakes up with towers and tentacles sprouting out and essentially, like any Japanese hentai, I can't believe I found a usage for that word in the review to describe basically what happens in the plot. The world and the people get fucked, and this event is known as the breeding. I am not making this up. That's what happens in the story. Not sexually, of course. Okay, okay, to the point. Leon is then sent to go check out the runes that he was found in and to see if he'll remember anything because coincidentally, as with any starting point for a character, he has amnesia, which thankfully has no dark descents because fuck motion sickness and babysitting a little bitch. So that's where your adventure starts as you explore and discover what happened over 5,000 years ago. Without spoiling it, what did I think of the overall plot from beginning to end? Well, I found it engaging and I wanted to uncover more of this world about its past and present, with the exception of the predictable and somewhat lame-ass ending. I liked the story and enjoyed going through it along with the game. There is also a very small amount of voice acting in certain parts of the game, and I don't really like it when a game suddenly has some voice acting in it when for the majority of the game it's just the usual text. It's like they were being indecisive about having voice acting or not. Either go full out or not at all. Now, it's not a big deal, but I wanted to note that because where else would I have mentioned it? So how does the game play out? Well, unlike my first impressions of the game, which I thought was going to play like a JRPG, the game plays like a Legend of Zelda mixed with Legacy of Goku 2. Yes, that's a weird way to describe it, but I say that because you've got the dungeon exploration and item collecting like in Zelda, and the combat plays like Legacy of Goku 2 of how you fight enemies by punching them, and collecting capsules to power up your egg. You can also do a spin dash, not the one from Sonic, that can attack enemies and is used to open doors. That part of the game was very Beyblade-like, I must say. It does a lot more damage and you move faster, but it does drain your energy unless you find a certain item from someone to negate that side effect. The game revolves around you trying to travel deeper into Fogna to find out what's causing the runes to come to life. I have to say, the game has a very good flow to your progress. It's not like, say, with Zelda where you clearly know you're just going from dungeon to dungeon with gimmicks you have to solve with the item you find in the dungeon and at the end fight a boss. Okay, so maybe Egg does play like that, but I like how you don't just go into a dungeon and forget about it when you're done like in Zelda. In the main dungeon, Fogna, you have multiple areas that you can't access early on, until later when you have the appropriate items and upgrades. And what I also liked is how most of the places you explore end up connecting back to the main dungeon. It doesn't feel forced, it feels like it's coming around full circle, like, ah, so that's where that doorway connects to. Now, despite the fact that I stated that the flow of the game is good, it has some really, really stupid moments in it that I find questionable. I almost gave in to looking up a guide, that's how bad it could have gotten. 
and especially in the early parts of the game. All I can say is, when you're playing this game, pay attention to everything. Here is a few examples. Early in the game, you come across this log that's blocking the path to another area. Obviously, you dismiss it since you can't do anything to it at the moment, so you proceed. Soon after, you gain the ability to shoot fire from your egg. By the way, the elemental attacks you do are legit badass awesome to do when you find them. For the next three hours, I was running all over the map wondering why the fuck I couldn't progress in the game. And it turns out I needed to burn the log that was blocking the road so I can find a very, very, very important game-critical item to progress in the game that the game doesn't give you a clue about. The item isn't even in a treasure chest, or a box, or from a character, or a store. No real money grinding needed, by the way. It's not even in a dungeon. It was in a fucking cave. Are you fucking serious? Why would you hide something so important in an area that seems dismissive? In Zelda, the really important item in the dungeon you find is always in some big chest to make it obvious so that you, the player, can't miss it. But if we go by Egg's logic, then Link would have found the important item under a specific spot in someone's house halfway away from the dungeon you needed in. You could argue, if you've played the game, that these items are scattered all over the place and wouldn't be in boxes and such. Okay, maybe, but the game can at least present it better. It just feels weird to find something important to the game under a rock. I guess the motto of the game is, literally leave no stones unturned. And you can also argue I didn't pay enough attention to the log that you have to burn. Okay, I'll give you that one. But I'm pretty damn sure my next point should be more legit than the log. In the main dungeon, Fogna, there's an elevator that takes you to a new area, but it requires that you have a certain element attack to charge it. Now, where is this element you're supposed to find? Well, for the past couple of elements you got, it was always in another part of Fogna and right after a boss fight. So, reasonably, I should expect that to be the format to finding the next element. But no, The game decides to fuck with you on this, and just hide it somewhere in the previous area you've been, where if you didn't pay attention, could miss and then run around the game wondering what the fuck is wrong with the game. Thankfully, after that log incident, I was wise to its scheme. So if you come into this game thinking it's going to play exactly like a Zelda game, you'd be pretty wrong and frustrated like me. Another thing that it does different that I was not expecting is that whenever you die from anything in the game, like a boss or an enemy cheesing you to death, which will happen early on and it pissed me the fuck off, instead of respawning at the beginning of the dungeon or the last save point, the game has the brilliant design to just spawn you from the last door you entered in from with a decent portion of your health restored. It's like a checkpoint with doors and thank fucking goodness they went with this, because otherwise, Egg would have been a very frustrating game and I would have cracked the fucking game- Oh. Well, that was gimmicky. Like, elemental gimmick gear! Since I mentioned gimmicks and puzzling game progression, Egg also has some puzzles you have to solve to progress, and they're actually pretty good puzzles with some of them being quite mind-boggling if you're not good at it. Let's not forget about the boss fights. The majority of the game is played in 2D, except, however, when you're fighting a boss. Everything goes 3D, kind of like Virtual On, but without the camera controls. It's a neat change of scenery, since the room is now bigger for you to fight the boss, versus if you did it in overhead 2D. The boss fights are very unique from one another, like most good games, and they have variety and different strategies you must implement in order to defeat them, but usually you can deal with them in any way you like. With the exception of the final boss, who is a fucking kick in the nuts, because... A, it's a really bland fight because the boss isn't threatening at all for a final boss. In fact, previous bosses would have made for a better final boss. B, the fight is really long because the regular damage you do to the boss seems minimal, especially if you didn't power up. Unless you're using the specific spoiler attack to do the most damage to it, which has a problem as well. C, if you've reached his end phase where he's flashing and you don't have enough of your spoiler attack to finish the boss off, which also warrants powering up, you're fucked and you have no way of beating it and have to die and restart. D, the theme music is just the dungeon music. No final boss theme or anything. Every other boss fight had a theme for their fight, but not the final boss? Presentation fail! And that's what I was talking about with the lame-ass ending. I think it's okay if this part of the game got spoiled for you, because it's a really shitty boss fight. Kind of like the final boss fight in Demons' Souls, but worse. Also, grinding for the elemental gems or health to refill can be a pain at times, but usually the game is nice about that part. I say this because thanks to the final boss's special condition to defeat it, I had a hell of a time grinding for gems. Yes, I know you can refill it at the shop, but the thing is, at that final part I was at, you have to go through an entire dungeon just to get back to town to do it. No shortcut you can use, and vice versa to return, so I was hoping to just cheese it right there on the spot. But no, the game decided to be a bitch right there. 
Speaking of worse, never play the minigames. They are horribly frustrating, like Mario Party frustrating. Just going to leave it at that because I rage quitted when I tried to play them. Thank goodness the main game did not have any level of the bullshit as the minigames do. Speaking of bullshit, the controls could have been a lot better. I don't know why the D-pad on the Dreamcast couldn't have been used either for alternate movement or quick select for items or element attacks. Sometimes on the joystick, I accidentally fall down in the holes because I was unaware that I was going slightly diagonal and it pisses me off. Long story short, the D-pad does nothing and neither does the Y button. Why do I bring that up? Well, see, the A button in the game does almost everything, from attacking, to talking, to lifting and pulling objects, to extending your arm. Let's just say I got really aggravated when I wanted a specific action to be done, but my character did something else. It's not intolerable, but as someone who's played and worked on game design, it's just weird and wasted that some of the buttons do nothing. If they had used the Y button for some of the actions, then it wouldn't be so bad at all. Despite all that nonsense, bullshit, and getting killed really quickly, I still found the game to be fun thanks to other aspects of it, like the music and the look of the game. How's the music, you ask? Oh yeah, the music's fucking great. How fucking great? Well, it's so fucking great that I got the fucking music on my fucking phone. That's how fucking great it is. Okay, am I just overhyping the music or is it really that good? Well, when I find that a game has a really good soundtrack, I typically listen to the music to death and it's all I can ever think about for the next couple of months, like, say, with Megalovania from Undertale. Now that role has been taken over by the soundtrack in Egg at the moment, because the music is all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Bad egg puns. But seriously, the music is great. From the peaceful sounds in the town... ...to the Zoid's Legacy-like shop jingle... atmospheric Metroid horror music in the ruins, beautiful piano track during cutscenes, Exciting boss battle themes, except for the final boss. I said, not the final boss fight. And my personal favorite is when you're wandering around Fogna and it gives you this epic adventurous theme, like the whole world is depending on you as its last hope. most epic thing I've heard in a while, even if it does remind me of the original Yu-Gi-Oh theme. I highly urge you to go check out the music in Egg if you want to look for something really great to listen to. There's even arranged tracks for two of the music in the game, like the town music, which sounds almost nothing like the original, but it's really good. Too bad the arranged Fog Edge soundtrack is kind of disappointing and lame in my opinion. You can find it on the soundtrack disc, because that's where I was aware of it. Also, the graphics, I have to say, in the 2D overhead section, everything in the world blended in very well, and it looks very genuine, natural, and it has a nice color palette. I forget I'm looking at a game half the time. It's a very nice piece of art to look at, and as the game goes on, certain areas start changing, and it's pretty neat. As for the 3D section, they're not bad, but it's clearly something you would only see in a video game, so that part kind of had a separation between the really good looking overhead graphics to, wow, that 3D looks so 90s. So anything else special about Egg I can say before I crack the egg and give it its final beating? There is a small VMU function where it tells you your stats and how much money you have. Kind of neat, but not super useful. Yeah, I think that's about it. So, do I recommend Egg Elemental Gimmick Gear on the Dreamcast? Hell yes! The game is fucking great. 
legit amazing experience to go through for the most part. The story is engaging, the game looks absolutely gorgeous in my opinion, the music fucking atmospheric, beautiful, and truly epic, and the gameplay is of course a blast to go through, for the most part. In fact, after completing the game and recording the footage for the review, I wanted to go back and play the game again, it's that good! Also, for those that are worried that the game is long since it's an RPG, it's actually a surprisingly short RPG game. It took me around 12 hours to beat with me grinding and getting stuck. Had that not been an issue, I would say the game is 8 to 9 hours long. Damn, that is short for an RPG, but short and sweet. I am so glad I got to play this game, so special thanks to Sonic Shuffler, or whatever name he goes by, for introducing, recommending, and getting me this legit awesome game. So to my viewers, I wholeheartedly recommend that you try and find Egg Elemental Gimmick Gear for your Dreamcast so you can take a crack at playing this wonderful game. This is WizWar100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more from WizWar100. See ya!